WDETFM during our on air fall fundraiser, our first on-air fall fundraiser for the Metro. Super excited to be here with you all today. It's a Tuesday, right, Sam? It is Tuesday. And I'm Tia Graham, and that's Sam Corey. I don't think I ever gave the names out either. <laughs> I know we got it. Now we got it. We're here. I'm so excited to be here with you, Tia. This has been, you know, it's it's only the third day that I've been on here with you talking about the fall fundraiser. This is super important. This is super cool. And it's a really, really great opportunity to give right now. I know you've been hearing about it for the last couple hours you're listening, you love the programs that we offer here, including, of course, the Metro, uh, but also Morning Edition, also Created Equal, also In the Groove, also all this super cool music programming that you asked us to add. Now we're coming to you. We're asking you to be a part of Team DET, right? We're looking for 10 gifts, $1,500 this hour. we can do that. We can definitely make that happen. Don't forget as well as you uh, enter in and you decide to give during this on-air fall fundraiser, you'll be entered in for a Metro Grand Prize drawing. You can get a MOCAD membership, Arab American National Museum package, which also includes a pair of tickets to the Yala Eats walking tour in East Dearborn, some of the best food you will experience in southeastern Michigan. That's right. You know that. Oh, I you're, know. Like, oh, I you're know. around that area. Yeah. You're, you're, you're around <laughs> that area, not too far from the area. Make sure to travel there often to get food uh, from some of my favorite spots, Alamir. Uh, but general admission tickets to the museum as well. You can get a signed book from Michigan's Poet Laureate, Nandi Comer. So I'm super excited about anyone who wins this award or win this award. It is an yeah. award because you're an amazing listener and you're an amazing uh, person for donating to WDET Public Radio. So if you are listening which I know you are listening right now. You're tuning in wherever you are. You can donate at WDET.org slash give 800-959-9338. Those gifts, you know, those things that we're going to give you um, for contributing to us, those are just add-ons, right? Those are just bonuses. You already know because you listen. You know how great the programming is here. You love it because you keep coming back to us again and again and again. And you also know that you're part of our community because your feedback matters. You have questions for us. We come back and we answer them. You have challenges. We come back. We try to solve those challenges, right? We incorporate your feedback into what we do here and we try to improve upon it. We try to offer better programming. We try to offer more diverse programming, more range of perspectives. And we give you a kaleidoscope of information, a, a, a broad range of programming and experiences. It's something that you just can't get anywhere else. No, so, you cannot, Sam. You would know you produce the show uh, <laughs> with, alongside uh, David Lyons, Jack Phil Brandt, alongside with making sure that it sounds good with Nate Bender on the board. But we do have something really, really amazing that we're going to bring you this afternoon, this afternoon, this morning. Ooh, Mark uh, Evan we're Jackson. Virgin, we're virgin on I know. It. We're, yeah, yeah. We're Mark Evan Jackson has roots here in Detroit, working with the Second City Detroit main stage. But Jackson also co founded the Detroit Creativity Project. And now he's in town to shine a light on new strategies that aim at improving youth mental health. So joining us right now in studio is actor, comedian, and co-founder of the Detroit Creativity Project, Mark Evan Jackson. Mark is also known for shows like The Big Pl- uh, The Bad Place, make sure we get that right, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and The Babysitter's Club. I absolutely love, love those shows. Mark, welcome to the Metro. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. It's so great to have you here, Mark. This is so cool. Yeah, so Detroit Creativity Project is an initiative that began in, in 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. and it's almost approaching 15 years already. You're getting close to 15 years. How has this ride been, especially being a co-founder of a nonprofit? It's been really exciting. The Detroit Creativity Project and our flagship program, the Improv Project, uh, effectively what it is, is it's an arts program for free in Detroit middle and high schools. We teach improv, which is unscripted theater. It's uh, something that a lot of people know from the show that used to be on called Whose Line Is It Anyway, oh, where you get yeah. audience suggestions. I, I remember that show. So it's, it's fun and it's funny by very nature of what it is. It's valuable in the way that every arts program is valuable. But improv, as it turns out, has this really wonderful, life-changing, life-opening, life-improving side effect of offering confidence and a sense of belonging. It offers community. Because in order to improvise well, you have to say yes to what's going on. The mm. very basic yes, and. Rule, yes, and. Yeah. You have to say yes to what's going on, and you have to add to what's going on. So you have to show up with energy. You have to be affirmative, be positive, work as a team. You're only as good as the sum of your parts. So there, are, it's a great field leveler. There are no... There are no cool kids and no nerds in improv. There are no jocks and no cheerleaders. Like everybody has to work together. And uh, what it means is that you 
you become a community and you realize mm-hmm. that your voice is important, that you are a necessary part of the community, of the conversation, and that you're already prepared with everything that you already have. You realize very early in to studying improv that you're improvising all the time. There's no mm. script for your day as you go to the gas station and the grocery store and the school or work and with your family. And how you approach those things, the attitude with which you approach those things matters. If you go in going, let's see how this goes. I don't know. Well, I'm going to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And if somebody's having a terrible day, you, it allows you to step back and realize, oh, they're not mad at me. They're mad about something else. And I'm going to offer them kindness about it. Like yeah. they're, they're dealing with something. They're going through mm-hmm. something. They're having some feelings some mm-hmm. so, sort of way. Yeah. And so then you go, okay, that's not about me. I don't have to meet them with equal force. I can go, hey, it seems like you're having a terrible day. Is there anything I can do? Yeah. So it teaches empathy and it teaches a sense of, of community and belonging. And it's, it's a really wonderful thing that so benefits mental health because we find ourselves in this city and in this country and on this planet in a time where the confluence of every kid having a phone in their hand and being face down to the screen all day, every day, mm. and you know isolated for that reason, on top of several years of lockdown and not being in school and just losing practice at what it means to be a human, yeah. just losing reps at socialization, um, a lot of kids are finding themselves really depressed, really anxious, really un- uncomfortable with the unknown and with uncertainty, which is every social situation ever, every family situation ever. And so this is a really great skill that, that teaches you it's, it's not that scary. Yeah. Like if you go into it with a good heart, if you go in going, I'm on your side, let's try it, then you find yourself having a better time. It makes you a more interesting person, a more interested person. I spent a lot of my life, I always tell people, I wasted probably into my mid-20s before I learned to improvise. Mm. If somebody came to me and they were an astrophysicist, something in me for no reason would be defensive about it and be like, I don't understand that. Thank you. Uh, no more. No further questions. Yeah. Like, tell me no more. Instead of like going, wait, why would I know about astrophysics? Mm-hmm. I have no background in that. I'm free to go. Wait, I know nothing about that. Tell me everything, please. Mm. Fill me with your knowledge. Like, mm. I'm so curious. Mm. And instead of feeling bad about how dumb I was, it's like, you just don't know it yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's a great mindset thing, and it's so valuable to everybody. I mean, f- the only people for whom improv is good is anybody that ever comes into contact with another human being. <laughs> like, like if, if you ever have to deal with a family member or a workplace or a school or anything. And it just offers such confidence and and uh, a sense of belonging, a sense of community, and that's really what our kids need right now. And I love that uh, right now we're chatting with Mark Evan Jackson, co-founder of the Detroit Creativity Project, a nonprofit aimed at teaching young students the power of improv and the power of just empathy, honestly. So the Michigan Department of Education Mm -hmm. recently approved the Professional Development Program for teachers using research from the University of Michigan. What will teachers learn now? Well, it's a wonderful train the trainer program. It's something we're very excited about. It's it's literally hot off the presses. It just <laughs> this just happened and it's something that we now offer. People can go to our website, DetroitCreativityProject.org, and under our programs page look for educators. Any any teacher in the state of Michigan, any accredited teacher, whether it's anywhere in the state, uh, elementary, middle school, high school, college, um, you have a certain number of professional development or continuing education hours each year that are necessary to maintain your, your license, your accreditation. And we are now certified that you can come and take our programs and that it will count to your uh, continuing education, your professional development. So they'll be learning improv principles and it be able to take those into their classroom. Not only will it impact how the teacher goes through their day, but by passing that on and teaching their students, let's approach things from a position of yes and, of going, we're going to affirm what's going on. We're going to work yeah. together. We're going to get on board and have energy and show up with a positive attitude. Yeah. And when that happens, when you approach things, when you approach the unknown going like, I don't know, let's see how it goes, but together, probably going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, if you make bold choices, it can really be a fun way to go through life. And the goal of the Detroit Creativity Project and this this Train the Trainer program has never been to create the next Keegan-Michael Key or the next Sam Richardson or <laughs> yeah. Tim Robinson or, or Tim Meadows necessarily, if that happens. And it could. There are some really talented people here in Detroit. Yeah, we're looking for them. Let's mm-hmm. go. I mean, they're yeah. around. But the point of a, uh, the overarching point of what we're trying to do is not create the next generation of comedians and actors and directors and musicians necessarily, uh, but to create the next generation of problem solvers and good humans. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's like you have something to go into. Yeah, saying. if you're just listening to us right now, we're speaking with Mark Evan Jackson, best known for roles in The Good Place in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, 
really interesting and people were so excited when they when they knew you were coming here today mark um you know some of those things that you're talking about community connection intrigue openness part of improv we do that here on wdet on this program and i just want to shout that out tia i want to shout you out for bringing that day in and day out you're listening to this program you know that tia is she's cool like she's cool wild mind dynamic curious intrigue that's important like that's what we bring here show your love for the program right now we're speaking to mark evan jackson i mean come on know, this is I cool just, what do you yeah, think, this I think about you know how uh, the listeners especially 75 years of listeners and support it just builds and builds and it, it allows us to have conversations like this one it's a really cool project that's happening in the city of detroit in the schools with the detroit creativity project but it just happens to be connected to mark evan jackson this is something that's really cool that's happening and we want to bring these type of conversations to you because once again these are stories that are helping the future future of Detroit, the generations to come uh, in Detroit. And we're going to hopefully have a more empathetic society with programs like the Mm, Detroit Creativity Project and so many other programs that we're able to talk about happening in the city of Detroit, because, you know, I always love to talk about the kids. I love the kids because Mm. literally the kids are the future. They're going to be the ones who are going to be your doctors as you get older and nurses Mm. and all those people. So making sure that these young people have these pathways, especially creative outlets like Detroit Creativity Project, that's co-founded by someone with the weight of Mark Evan Jackson and all the knowledge and the connections that he has. I mean, just having that and building on that is absolutely inviolable. Give now. Give now. WDET.org slash give. WDET.org slash give. Or call 800-959-9338. You know, I got that number wrong yesterday, but we're cleaning it up. 800-959-9338. So, Mark, we're going to, we're still chatting with you about the Detroit Creativity Project. I was actually able to see the kids perform earlier this year. And when I said my mind was blown because not only is it tough enough to get out and put yourself out there in front of people that you don't know, it's scary. For sure. So scary. And they did it without blinking, without hesitating, without even missing a beat. It was absolutely fascinating to see. Uh, we actually have a clip of one of the performances. It was a cool uh, game that was being played on stage. And, and here it is. Hi, girl. See, what I got to do? I got to oh, tell okay. you. Oh, okay, listen. No? You talking a lie? And I just want my hair done. Okay. I just want my makeup done. I just want my hair done. I got a party but in two like, hours, and you're just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you like hear me talk? Wait, 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 you hate me? Girl, sit in the chair. Sit in the chair. And that's too hot, not too hot. And what I love the most about that particular game was- Sit in the chair. Sit in the chair. In the chair. <laughs> it's, it's like you have a different role at that moment. So there were like kids that were rotating uh, between different- Role. So mm-hmm. one role happened to be a, hairdr- a hairdresser and the other person was going to get her hair done yeah. by the dresser. And so they had to quickly act in that moment, in that second, a new scene, a new, scene new scenario with a new cast member, or a new partner. Yep. And it was absolutely amazing to see them flip from maybe being the customer to now being the hairdresser. It was so fast and so impressive to see kids 14, 15, 16, even younger doing this on stage off the top of their minds. Mark, can you talk about when you see the kids doing stuff like that, how, you know, how it feels to see them flourish? I'm uh, grinning from ear to ear because, uh, <laughs> because to see, you know, these are really tough years for kids, right? Mm. It's tough. These are tough years in any circumstance. It was when I grew up, it was a hundred years ago. It will be a hundred years from now. You're trying to determine who you are as a person and you're trying to like, you don't know much at that, at that stage. Yeah. So you're trying to carve out your identity and it's very tempting to want to like be cool and and be too cool for school <laughs> yeah. and not get involved. And what what you've just demonstrated is that the reason that they're fearless about jumping in and and getting into it is the practice at going. All right, I'm gonna in small doses. I'm gonna allow myself to be vulnerable. Mm. I'm gonna you know act out in front of my friends, and if it goes poorly, it goes poorly, and whatever. And that's what improv teaches you. It teaches you to be less scared about failure. Failure is mm-hmm. going to happen. Failure happens all day, every day in our lives. You can't script things perfectly every single time. And also, if you were develop, develop, developing a product, uh, something in the auto industry or the space program or a new food thing, if you hit it 100% the first time, you're not going to learn anything. Mm-hmm. you got to fail. you got to prototype. you got to go through things. And life is exactly that way. Yeah. So what, these, what the Detroit Creativity Project and the Improv Project teaches is that if you're willing to be vulnerable – 
you're probably not going to look silly. Mm. If you try to stay buttoned up, you're going to fail immediately. If you mm. make a bunch of beige, middle of the road, lukewarm choices and stuff, but if you blast down a road with your friends and go, I don't know, let's be stupid. Let's see what happens. <laughs> let's get silly. You're going to look like geniuses who <laughs> can immediately snap in and out of a chair in a, in a hair salon and entertain a couple hundred people. It was amazing to hear the crowds roar so many times, and they weren't fake laughs. It's Mm-mm. Detroit, so Detroit doesn't fake laugh. Oh, oh no, <laughs> Detroit doesn't oh, play. No, no. You, you got to earn it. You have yeah, to you earn really it. And do. these kids got on that stage and they earned the laughs that they were getting. And I just thought to myself, if I had a little bit of that, a little bit more of that, you know, you know, vulnerability there, like you were just saying, Mark, you could definitely tackle any challenge that you face. Can I tell you an amazing story that happened years ago? Yeah. We were doing an event at the Detroit Film Theater at the DIA years ago. And we had this amazing opportunity to take, uh, we were going to do a show in the Detroit Film Theater. But beforehand, uh, two of our student groups came to that show. One from, a, I think it was Hutchinson Middle um, Elementary Middle School, and I think the other was Southeastern Fairview Academy. And the DIA let us tour the exhibit before the show. It was all closed down. We got ushered through the dark museum uh, by security. So cool. And it was a photography exhibit called Detroit After Dark, which was like all, you know, like late night street scenes, neon. It was very cool. And in town for that fundraiser were Keegan-Michael Key and Tim Meadows, wow. two friends of mine, mm. two people from Detroit that got their starts here that are legitimate movie stars. <laughs> and in talking with these students before the, uh, during the exhibit, uh, unprompted by me and separate from one another, Tim Meadows said to one group and Keegan said to the other, wait, this is amazing. You guys are improvising. How are you liking it? And they're like, oh, it's so much fun. And it's, you know, it's like I used to be shy and now I have more confidence and it's going to help with uh, college interviews and job interviews. And it, it's just made me a better, you know, like better at the dinner table. Like it's made me a better person. And each one, Keegan and Tim Meadows, both said to these kids, and how old are you? And one group said 14, 15. One group said 17, 18. And they said, Wow, that's amazing. I didn't start improvising till I was in my mid-20s. You yeah. guys have a 10-year head start on me. And I watched these kids' eyes go, I have a head start on Keegan-Michael Key. <laughs> I have a head start on Tim Meadows. Right? So again, we're not trying to necessarily create brilliant comedic stars, but to see that these, uh, these kids, our students, yeah. have these life skills that they're learning and practicing and honing 10 years earlier than some world famous people. I, I mean, it's, yeah. it's something I wish I'd had in high school. Yeah. And that's why we created this 12, 13 years ago yeah. is we got those of us who made it to Hollywood were like, we want to give back. At the time, Mayor Dave Bing was going around saying to everybody, come to Detroit, open an office in Detroit, visit Detroit, talk about Detroit, say nice things about Detroit. <laughs> so we were out in, at my house. My wife, Beth Hagenlocker, and I were at our house in Venice, California. And we had all our friends over for a few cookouts. And we were like, what should we be doing? To, to help Detroit. And they were like, well, it took about two seconds to realize improv is what made all of our lives great. Mm. Improv is why we all have careers and have, you know, had the mindset and the Detroit grit to keep going and push because there's a lot of, lot of rejection. And so that's, it took two seconds to go, we should be teaching improv in public schools in Detroit. Yeah, we, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. And, you know, we want to be vulnerable with you right now. We're coming to you. Make Detroit, continue letting Detroit be great. Continue supporting the programs that you love. We have some people who've already given this hour and we want to thank them. Helen. Helen from Gross Point. Thank you, Helen and thank Gross you, Point Helen. so much for your generous donation here during the Metro, you're entered in for that grand prize, uh, a package, MOCAD membership, Arab American National Museum package, which includes the tickets to the Yala Eat walking tour in East Dearborn. And you also have the signed book from Michigan's Poet Laureate, Nandi Comer. If you are listening, which I know you are listening right now, I know you're listening right you're now. Listening. Give at WDET.org slash give. Use the WDET mobile app. It's one of my favorite things to use. And, you know, I know you may be at work and you can't do some things. Just go to the mobile app, hit click, donate really quickly. Or you can call us 800-959-9338. It's 800-959-9338. But we will return, Sam, myself, and... We're currently chatting with Mark Evan Jackson, co-founder of the Detroit Creativity Project, also actor as well as comedian. And, you know, we're going to get more into the life of Mark Evan Jackson, Detroit Creativity Project, and so much more. I'm so excited. I can't wait. On 1019 WDETFM during our on-air fall fundraiser, I'm Tia Graham here with Sam Corey. What's up, Tia? What's up? And we're also here chatting with Mark Evan Jackson, co-founder of the Detroit Creativity Project as well, one of the stars of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, as well as one of the stars of the Good 
Place, the which good I place. absolutely love that show so very much. Um, but want to say thank you to Mark for being here during our on air fall fundraiser. It is my pleasure, and I, I I don't know if this has been said yet, but I have a background. I'm a public radio alum. I used to work uh, for WGVU AM and FM in Grand Rapids, Michigan, from Grand Valley State University. I love member supported public radio. <laughs> um, I uh, I used to do this. I started as a weekend. Uh, board operator from 6 a.m. to noon and 6 a.m. to 10 uh, on Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays for weekend edition Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And then eventually, uh, I guess my next step was to be the producer for a five day a week, a Monday through Friday, three hour per day call in talk show. Wow. Uh, so booking like a guest an hour kind of thing. That was yeah. a bunch. And then in true public radio fashion, on a Friday, they let the host go. And on Monday, I was the host. Wow. And I think I was 25 years old and knew wow. less, less than than I do now, which isn't a bunch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> why is public radio important? Like, what did you learn from that experience, and, and what, why, did, why does it matter? I mean, the public and public radio is what makes it special, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, it's programming and music by people for people. It's it's different than corporate media. It's different thing uh, than what you know money can pay for. You're going to hear music on WDET that you would never come into contact with anywhere else in the world. Mm-hmm. You're going to find stories like that of the Detroit Creativity Project, and the big difference is you have time. When they do packages on commercial radio or on commercial television, you might be lucky to get a minute 20 out of a story. And I mean, you can barely say the website in that time. So you don't have the time to flesh out and get to the humanity, get to the public nature of what the stories are. It's scenes are about people and they're about people coming together or moving further apart. And that's true of the news on this station. You're going to have more time to flesh out the intricacies and the subtleties of a story than you would on God Love Them. And I've, I've just come from there on Fox 2 or on w, uh, XYZ or on WDIV, like yeah. live in the D are friends of mine. That's great. They simply don't have the time to really yeah. get into a conversation. Yeah. And that's what public radio is. It's a conversation with the listeners. And as it happens, it comes with a cost. Yeah. And that's why we need your support here on member-supported public radio from Wayne State University, 101.9 WDET. That's right, WDET.org slash give. We're asking you to give right now. Give us that time. Give us the time to continue exploring really rich conversations with Mark Evan Jackson. <laughs> Where do you get to hear this stuff, right? I mean, this is really, these are vulnerable, open, intriguing conversations. You know, you, you get to hear from Tia day in and day out. She's grinding. She's gritty. She's exploring a lot of wild and interesting things happening in the city and the region. This, this is important. You're listening right now. You know this is important to you. Now's the time to give. Don't wait. We have a $1,500 match. So every you know, dollar for dollar gets matched $10. We get 20 20 40 40 80 right? That's amazing for us. It's amazing for us. And you only have to give 10 20 30 $40. And it means that much more to the programming here. Give now, wdet.org slash give or call 800 800- 959-9338. Just want to say thank you to a few other uh, gifts that we saw roll in. Lawanda, thank you so much, Lawanda in Woo-hoo! Detroit. That is a huge thank you to Lawanda. Sabine also in Gross Point Park. Thank you so much. And as well, Laura out of Detroit, giving the first of multiple gifts. I intend to give this drive in support of Created Equal and the Metro. I'm a big fan of both of these programs and people who make them. Also, because Carrie and Steven were hyping the tote bag, I just want to <laughs> say I pack my lunch water bottle and cardigan in my WDET told almost every day, and it's great. You know why it's great, though? The zipper. Oh, most totes don't come with don't a zipper. This is a zipper. It has it's a got zip. a zipper. Game changer. <laughs> Game changer. I say that every time. Yeah, it's just the most amazing little feature there on a tote bag. This Pamela as well. Want to say thank you and Troy, and just want to say thank you to Helen, who's in Gross Point, who also generous don- jo- donator this hour, and anonymous out of Cala. California. California. We I love I know the Go note. I love over. WDET and stream your broadcast in California. I moved here 22 years ago and WDET is still my favorite public station. Other than the thank you gift, please don't send any. Okay, so cool beans. We see what that's happening with that one. So they just want that thank you gift. That's right. And that that's thank right. you gift that they chose was the tower mug. Beautiful tower mug that we have, coffee mug. You can just drink and have a cup of Pat, ba- like they used to say, have a cup of Pat Bachelor in the morning. Love that so much. That's part of waking up, right? Yeah, it's, it's Pat, Pat Bachelor, Bachelor in, in your cup. cup. Love that so That's one of my favorites. But once once again, we're joined right now by uh, Mark Evan Jackson, co-founder of the Detroit Creativity Project, uh, actor, 
comedian who's worked with some of the greatest in the industry, so some true. of the funniest in the industry. And we were just talking a little bit with Mark about uh, his time at WGVU mm-hmm. in, uh, in, Grand in Grand Rapids. Yeah, and you were talking about... <laughs> the firing happening on a Friday and Monday, you're a host. <laughs> so, what did that process feel like in your brain at 25? How do you quantify sheer terror? <laughs> um, I mean, it, like, as you know, three hours per day uh, is several years. Time. Time. Yeah. I mean, it's forget it. It's mm. dead air. And so uh, we also were a public radio station in what was then, it, it still is, but less so, a wildly conservative area. Yeah. So yeah. we, you know, we would be on doing pledge drives for weeks trying to get seventy thousand dollars, and no, the phone would not ring. Whoa. So you are vamping and you are talking and you are reframing the argument um, <laughs> over and you're reading. You know, at the time we had uh, card boxes full of liners to read and things, and it was like you'd read the whole box in, in a in an eight minute pledge break. I mean, it was bananas. Um, Nobody would call in, and the same three callers would call for that three hour per day yeah, talk show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary from Kentwood and uh, Richard from wherever. Like it was the same three callers. And at the time, you were like, thank goodness they called. Because yeah. I'd be on here talking to myself about, you know, plans to expand Gerald Ford Airport or whatever. Right. Like it was, it was a bunch. Um, but I, you know, my time there, I grew up on public radio. I, my to and from piano lessons and French horn lessons and percussion yeah. lessons. My mother had, uh, I grew up in Buffalo, so it was WNED. Mm. Um, and we would listen to that all the time. I, I feel like I think in the, in the parlance, in the, in the pattern of, of public radio. <laughs> and for me, it's about the moments. I can remember, you know, as they say in, in NPR talk, uh, driveway moments where you are home or to work or wherever you're going to the grocery store and you stay in the car to hear the end of the story yeah. on All Things Considered or Morning Edition or whatever. You are definitely, uh, I, I can remember in 1999 listening to WDET on my way to my girlfriend's house in Royal Oak, Michigan, when I learned that Milt Jackson, the vibraphonist from the Modern Jazz Quartet had passed away. Wow. And I pulled over to the side of the road and I said a, a silent hello to my late father who introduced me to jazz, wow. uh, you know, in public radio. And, uh, that's a moment I will never forget as long as I live. And that is thanks to WDET. So I encourage people to take a moment and think about what it means to them, those moments, what you've learned, events in your community that you've heard of, issues that you might not have known were going on, yeah. music that you love, that you learned from this station that you would never, ever have found from a commercial station. Um, JLB jams my strong songs, but you are not going to find... You are not going to find the music there that you find on WDET. <laughs> Give to those so please, moments. 800-959-9338, WDET.org slash give. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Mark, I, so, and so I guess when exactly did you make the transition into, into acting? When did that, when did that come? That was completely accidental and it was because of public radio. So I, <laughs> it all comes back to public radio. All truth. All this is truth. Um, so I, uh, had learned, I had begun improvising in Grand Rapids after college, uh, maybe 1995 or so. And, and that was accidental too. Like uh, I, I'm an improviser. You know who I am because I learned to say yes to some stuff and try and risk failing. So a group of uh, college alumni from my school were putting together an alumni improv troupe. They asked my old college roommate to come play the piano for them to be their accompanist. He called me. He's like, I don't want to do that. You go do that. I went to the first rehearsal to be the piano player for this group, saw what they were doing, and I was like, oh my gosh, we need to find somebody else to come play the piano because I want to learn how to do what you're doing and do it for the rest of my life. Whoa. And then when I was working at, uh, at WGVU, the, uh, the Second City Touring Company from Detroit came through. They were doing some fundraising shows for some, some charity, I think. They came through. We had them on the air. And as they were leaving, their producer, George Bernius, who's now a friend of mine, I said, hey, I'm an improviser. If you ever hold auditions, let me know. And a few months later, the phone rang, and he was like, we're holding auditions. And I, I went, and I made the mistake, maybe, of putting the music on my resume, on my piano and French horn and percussion and stuff. Got hired to be the musical director for the touring company, Ooh. then got hired to be the musical director for the uh, main stage company, moved to Detroit, lived right behind the Majestic on East Willis, yes. right across from Union Street, yes. RIP Union yes. Street and Dragon Eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that one hurts. That one stings. Um, <laughs> and then I, you know, that took off, it took off from there. I, I have a career because of improvisation. I've never taken an acting class. I've just done it and done it and done it. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's incredible. absolutely incredible. You think about the range of some of the characters that we've been able to see you play. I mean, 
and you have no formal training. It's just you saying, Reps. yes, and. Just trying. Just and doing just, it and doing it. And then like a maniac watching the tape afterwards going, what do I buy? What do I hate? Like, don't do that again. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. What was I thinking there? Yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's all from doing it. Yes. We, we bring these conversations to you. You're listening right now to the Metro. You listen to other programs on DET. Become part of Team DET. Become part of the leadership circle. Give for people who can't give $100 a month. If you got it, it's important. Give it now. Do not wait. We have Mark Evan Jackson here. We're going to bring you more of that. WDET.org slash give. WDET.org slash give. Or go to the phone, 800 959 338. We'll be right back. It's the Metro on 1019 WDET FM. I'm Tia Graham here with show producer Sam Corey. Hi, Sam. Hi, Tia. So happy to be here with you. This is really cool. And then we're also here with Mark Evan Jackson, co founder of the Detroit Creativity Project, also an actor, a comedian, also self taught, honestly. I mean, <laughs> not self taught. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, nobody said that. <laughs> but I know you're listening. I know you're joining the Metro this morning. And want to say thank you to those who've already given a, a gift of support to the Metro and to WDET as a whole. Um, but if you have given, this hour, you are automatically entered in to a MOCAD membership. You'll get the Arab American National Museum package. Includes a pair of tickets to the Yala Eat Culinary Walking Tour in East Dearborn. And you'll also get a signed book from Michigan's Poet Laureate, Nandi Comer. So this is a really, really cool package that you're entered in to win. And don't forget the grand package for everyone who enters in at any time during WDET's on air fall fundraiser. They get the trip to Morocco. Wow. You're entered in to get the trip to Morocco. Get to go to Morocco. And what Dave Lyons has said, the show's executive producer, what he says about Morocco, absolutely fantastic. The dunes, the small towns, the old, the history of it all. So if you're interested in going to Morocco, or maybe you're just interested in listening to WDET for another 75 years, you can give now at WDET.org slash give 800-959-9338. And, and as always, I just want to say thank you to another person who decided Woo-hoo. to give this hour. It looks like we have that anonymous there out of California, we did hit them, but want to say thank you again because they are still listeners of WDET after 22 years, That's which right. is... That's right. Could you imagine? You don't want to. You don't want to miss this. You want to be a part of this. You want to be a part of this programming. We need you to continue giving this great programming. We offer a variety of conversations, a variety of music, and we take your feedback. We incorporate it. That's because you're part of the community. Now is the time to give. Give for people who are not able to. Right there are a lot of people who enjoy these programming. They don't have the privilege of being able to give into it. But if you're listening right now and you can, this is the time. We're looking for ten gifts, fifteen. $1,500. We can do we can it. Do this. Last last time we got seven gifts. Yeah. We got a lot we, of gifts. Yeah, we did. We want more. We need more gifts. We need that to continue going on 76, 77, 78 years, continuing these conversations with people like Mark Evan Jackson, wonderful folks from around the community who are part of shaping this great city and this great region. We can only do that with your support as well. The number on the line, you already know, 800-959-9338. You got it. Or go to <laughs> WDT.org slash give WDT.org slash give You did it Sam but (laughs) as we're chatting on the Metro right now with Mark Evan Jackson we were talking a little bit earlier uh, just a moment ago about your time with public radio some Mm -hmm. of the things you experienced fundraising and I honestly wanted to know about your time here in Detroit you live behind the Majestic Mm -hmm. what was it like at the time living in the city especially compared to now? It was a different world altogether. What year was it? This was from 97 to the very beginning of 2001. Okay. And uh, it was uh, still the Wild West a little bit. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. a time when even Detroit police officers weren't stopping at red lights at night yeah. um, because it was legitimately dangerous. I mean, it it makes my heart happy to see all the life that has filled in between Woodward and Montcalm at the Fox Theater where I used to work and and uh, mid, what we're now calling Midtown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cass, yeah. Cass yeah. Corridor yeah. when I lived here. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's still called the Cass Corridor. Yeah. <laughs> <by the locals>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but no, I mean, there's, you know, Detroit, uh, is still an imperfect entity, but to see the attention, to see people 
from elsewhere begin to recognize what we knew at the time. We knew that, I mean, I lived in Detroit for four years and it became home. Mm. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. I went to college in Grand Rapids. I lived up in Traverse City for a while, lived in Maine for a while. Mm. But in those four years, I mean, there's something in the air here that you know that Detroit is special. And that's why we wanted to start the Detroit Creativity Project to to share what made our lives great with the up-and-comers, with the next generation. I also believe firmly, quote me on it, Children are our future. Mm. And I think that, uh, you know, that's why we started this, uh, the Detroit Creativity Project, to share that with the next generation, to help make Detroit from within an even better place than it was already becoming. What have what have you learned from this project? What has maybe surprised you that you you didn't anticipate learning from? from I didn't realize how much I don't like uh, meetings. <laughs> uh, like I'm not built for business. I think I knew that when I was in public radio, when I you know, I think I realized in my 20s if I had to sit at a desk from nine to five. My throat would close by 10.30 in the morning. You know, <laughs> don't have what it takes to, to have an office job. And I think that that informs some of that. But I've learned a lot about myself and about what it means to care about a cause. When you, when you realize how much something has impacted your life and the benefits it's offered you, you can't wait to share it with others. Mm. You can't wait to go and preach the gospel of this really life-opening, uh, affirmative, positive thing that makes you... It, it relieves all fear in, mm. in of, of social interactions. It's mm. such an anxiety reducer. It's such an empathy builder. And it just makes you happier to go into the unknown going, hi, I'm Mark. What's your name? You yeah. know, it, it truly is a fear eraser. It's such a good thing for social anxiety, social phobia. The, the University of Michigan study that you quoted earlier, Tia, um, it was a th- initially three-year, then five-year study that showed a significant reduction. One hour per week in class, for a 10-week program of studying improv at, at Detroit Creativity Project showed a 40% reduction in social phobia, social anxiety, wow. and de- even depression. And we, this, they don't love me quoting this statistic, <laughs> but kids, this has happened throughout and continues to this day, kids who had otherwise skipped school that day have been caught sneaking into our <laughs> programs, oh. which I think says a little bit about what they get from it. Like, that is because they, yeah. it's a safe place for them to, yeah. to be silly, to create, to be vulnerable. They feel like they're part of a team. And, um, you know, Detroit doesn't play and kids don't play. Kids aren't yeah. going to sneak into something they hate. Right. Like, no. What do you do What do you do to create that, that vulnerability, that safe space, that, that space where people can express a wide range of, of things? Right? It's Bridget built into the very basics of improv. I mean, you make it clear very early on. We're in this together. Um, you know, there are no cool kids. There are no not cool kids. Like, we all have to work together. And you find... Very early into doing a scene, you stand up and you get a suggestion from the audience and you're told to go with it, that if you try to be solo, if you try to be what we sometimes refer to as a cowboy or a gunslinger, if you try to be funny and take it on yourself, the scene, you might get one laugh and the scene's going to tank immediately because you've undone all the fabric, all the structure of the agreement and the the collaboration that was going into it. So it's only by saying yes to what's happening and adding on to what's happening Mm -hmm. in tiny little steps. You walk off the back line into a scene, and as we say, it's a white room with nothing in it. And suddenly, a few lines in, we're mother and son, and we're on our way to my wedding, and I'm nervous about it, and uh, it's raining, and and suddenly it's this brilliant cinematic tapestry Mm -hmm. that you've created from nothing. Improv should be, and often feels, impossible. But when you approach it with a good spirit and work as a team, and, and show your love for one another. That's another very basic rule of improv is making your scene partner look good. Yeah. You're not trying to trick anybody or trying yeah. to gotcha anybody. You're trying to give them gifts and set them up for success. Yeah. And man, that translates immediately into off the stage and changes how you go through life. I like, just got to say, someone who sets us up for success day in and day out, I'm going to hype you up, Tia, Tia Graham. Well, like, what, no, this what, is, what, yeah, you know, I'm honestly, show. in show. my brain, I was just thinking to myself, I'm listening to Mark talking, and I'm just thinking about the connections there to WDT, public radio in general. Yeah. Like, if you value the connection, the community that you have, like-minded individuals who have similar thoughts that you may have or similar interests, you'll find some of that community right here at WDET you'll find it at Public Radio so yeah. as you're listening to WDET as you're listening to the Metro this morning uh, just think about some of the cool conversations the interesting conversations in-depth conversations we're able to bring to, to, to our listeners here in the city of Detroit and even in 
California, honestly, just all over the country, we've been able to present this really, really good news, conversation, and arts. And I'm really excited about everything we could bring to yeah. the airways and to the listeners. Just want to say thank you to Amanda out in Rochester Hills. The entire newsroom stands for Mark Evan Jackson. Woo-hoo! Everyone out there standing for you right now, as they should. I mean, have you ever seen? Are they standing <laughs> desks? Because that yeah. doesn't count. <laughs> no standing no, desks here. Yeah. Well, not around us. <laughs> no, not around us, I don't think. Oh, actually, our executive producer, David Lyons, has a standing desk. He's sitting now, but he does have a standing desk. That he stands at all the time. But if you're listening right now, you want to support the Metro. I know you're listening right now. You want to support the Metro. Support conversations like this one we're having with Mark Evan Jackson, or just support the Metro and WDE. Yeah. See, you can give now at WDET.org slash give. And you can also go 800-959-9338. Support the wide variety of interactions that we have here. Again, the number on the line, 800-959-9338. Or give at WDET.org slash give. We're coming back with more conversation with Mark Kevin Jackson. It's the Metro on 1019 WDET FM. I'm Tia Graham here with Sam Corey, Mark Evan Jackson as well, co founder of Detroit Creativity Project, also actor and comedian. I just want to say a thank you to Matthew from Fort Gratiot, Michigan. Thank you so much for your generous donation this hour. You're entered in to win that giant package that we're giving away for any. Anyone who decides to give during our on air right. fall fundraiser, I was looking at something else. I was thinking about the Morocco package. Like, you get that. So one many too. different things. Yeah. There's so many different things that so you can many get if you give. Things. If you give. And I know that you are listening right now. I know that you support some of the conversations, all the conversations that you're hearing on WDET. Or maybe you don't support it and you think to yourself, I'm going to listen to see what this side is or what we're talking about here. No matter what why you tune into WDET you do and if you've never supported before you should do so right now WDET.org slash give you can also go and give us a call 800-959-9338 as we always talk about there's a human on the other line I'm not talking to the robot. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing it. I I'm not doing do it. it. I don't want to do it. No, I, I do can't it. do it. I like. It. I like human interaction. I love. Yeah. So the humans on the other line there, eight hundred nine five nine nine three three eight. Donate through the mobile app as well. Just there's, click donate right there. There's so many different reasons to give. This hour, as T is talking about, you know, we're looking for ten gifts, fifteen hundred dollars. We're it. getting closer and closer to that goal. We're almost to the end of the hour. But we're getting closer and closer to that goal. When you listen to WDT, there's so much different programming. And so many of the conversations, we're trying to tap into the tapestry of human experiences, Ooh. the nuance, the dynamism that exists between all of us, that exists within us, and that exists within well, between all of us. We try to show you the diverse forms in which that happens, the range of experiences that people are having, the depth of their humanity. We're not giving you clickbait. There's so many places to go for cheap information. But let me tell you something. Good information costs something, right? It costs something to produce this. It costs something to take the time to be considerate, to do your homework, and to come on the mic and to be thoughtful. Tia Graham, one of the best here. Support that. Be a part of that. Be a part of Team DET. Give now, 800-959-9338. Give for someone who can't. We got $1,500 match, excuse me. Your dollars get matched. $10 becomes 20, 20, 40, 40, 80. Also, you could be a part of the leadership circle if that's right for you. $100 a month, you get invited to WDET events and you get free tickets to different things going on around the city. Give now, WDET.org slash give. Do not wait, WDET.org slash give. And I want to say some thank yous too. So if you're listening right now, which I know you are, I know you're listening. Maybe you don't have your hands free. Maybe some things are happening, but you can use the mobile app. I don't know, WDET mobile. You can just click that little mobile app. Yeah, super quick. Maybe you can use hands free, 800 959 9338. Just Call that out really quickly to your phone. They can mm-hmm. they can dial that up for you. Your phone can dial it. Yeah, really quickly. And then as well, WDET.org slash give. Want to say thank you to those who've already donated during the Metro during this hour and to those who've donated to the entire station in a whole, in a whole. I mean, I just think about 75 years of just news, music, and conversation. Yeah. We just heard a little bit. I mean, jazz with Ed Love has been a part of my life and so many others' life. Yeah. He's been on the air for 60 years. So he's been through <laughs> generations of so wow. many people and uh mark evan jackson just bringing you back into this conversation during our on air fall fundraiser by the way guys um just talking you were talking a little bit about of course the what it meant to you to have that moment with wdt you sat in your car you pulled over you you kind of gave a little homage to your father who Mm -hmm. recently passed away and it's just you know wdt tries to to 
promote and 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 foster good conversations, good music, and and of course good good uh, good news. But it doesn't necessarily set out to be a star player. We just set out to make sure that we're giving people the news, music, and conversation that they need and love. So when we think about those type of things, Mark, um, just go into once again the importance of public radio and what it means to have it uh, uh, accessible. Well, I think it's so important to realize that WDET, like all public radio, is special because it's your radio station. Mm. If you have an interest, if you're if you are not uh, hearing what you want to hear, you can write in and different than commercial radio, commercial so television. You, people, somebody's going to answer that email. Yes. Somebody's going to. We hear you. We'll look into that. We did not know about that. Thank you for that. I mean. Uh, this sounds so pro coming over the air, and uh, what you don't realize is that uh, public radio, by design, is scrappy. Like mm-hmm. these are people that are that are working hard, that are doing multiple jobs very often. The uh, people working, you know, longer hours to provide a world class. You know, this is a this is a big market station and has a very pro sound and great content. And that comes at a cost. And so you have to ask yourself as a listener, what's it worth to me? And I think, I think if you're honest with yourself, you're going to say, I tune into this every day. Why? Why, why this station versus others? There, mm-hmm. There's a dial full of other stations. What is it about this that speaks to me? And I think it's that you feel like you're part of a community. You're yeah. learning about events within the metro area. You're learning about uh, political issues and cultural issues. You're learning, uh, as I said, um, I know bands that I still follow. Uh, you know, back in the day, it was CDs that you bought and that sort of thing. But it's because you heard it. And these are independent artists very often, things that you would never in a billion years come across were it not for WDET so 101.9 FM. So please, take a moment, value what you, how, how WDET, what it means to you, and go to the phone, 800-959-9338, or WDET.org slash give. Mark, we're talking to you a little bit about your project, of course, the Detroit Creativity Project that you helped uh, 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 co-found, um, getting kids involved in improv. What have you learned about y- like young people? What have you learned about their development? I know you're talking about all the great ways that improv kind of helps them, but I guess what have you learned about the way that they interact with each other? What have you learned about how youth, I don't know, come up? They are so fearless, and and when they're when they're taught that they... It doesn't matter what your zip code is that you're born into. Your potential as a human being is not limited by your birth circumstances. Um, and when people can see uh, somebody that looks like them doing what they want to be doing, um, what's exciting to me is to see these kids, you, you can see it in their eyeballs when they, they have the aha moment that I had when I went to go play the piano for River City Improv. And you see them go, wait, I'm good at this. I have something to say. My voice is important. I'm necessary in this conversation. And what's exciting to me about the youth of, of Detroit today and, and in the future is what they'll do with it. They're going to take these skills and apply them to all of the apps and the phones in their lives that I know so little about. Um, but they're going to use that. And, and the basic skills that the Detroit Creativity Project teaches are going to launch them further and deeper into whatever they want to do, whether it's education or, or you know, creating something, working in, in the auto industry, whatever it is. They're going to approach things differently and have better, more meaningful lives, be better citizens, and solve problems for the future. And Mark, uh, we were, were just talking about the kids, of course, but I'm thinking about adults as well. We were mm-hmm. talking about that before break, um, how improv could help someone like myself in this position or someone like Sam Corey, who produces the show, or even uh, mm-hmm. Ryan Patrick Hooper, who hosts In the Groove. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. So how could improv help all of us? Well, improv is good for anyone, and truly, it's it's not meant for just people hoping to work in comedy or in television or film or be a writer or be a director. It truly makes it will make Thanksgiving dinner go so much better <laughs> when you are able to see uh, uh, from other people's perspectives yeah. and and not play one-upsmanship games at the f- table Ooh. and go. You know, I, I've seen it within my own family when when yeah. you know a teenager is feeling good about something they've accomplished and somebody goes, "Well, you used to wet the bed, so don't get too." Yeah. too high. And herself, and it's like, why did what made you say that? Why yeah. would you do that? Why are you tamping that person down? They're having a moment, like they're feeling good about themselves. That's a good thing. That doesn't take away from your success or your life at all. Yeah. It's not a zero sum game success. It sounds like it's not one up, it's one and. It's like, what, what, yeah. how can we build together what is non zero sum about this? So it's yeah. good for everybody. That's why the train the trainer program we have that's just been accredited from the Michigan Department of Education is so important. It's going to teach these teachers uh, these wonderful life skills, which we hope that they take to into their classrooms. And, um, 
um, truly, we're working with a group called Brilliant Detroit, teaching yeah, in we love Brilliant, Brilliant Detroit. Detroit. It's wonderful yes. with their with their community centers that they built in homes, yes. working with younger and younger uh, uh, students and and the youth of Detroit, and of course, uh, a lot of their family members, their parents and grandparents and older siblings are involved. So, um, improv is for anyone. We we hope to expand to to younger and younger people, but uh, by by working with uh, you know corporate groups, um, if you ever wanted to have a meeting or be a negotiator, or if you fancy yourself a business consultant, you better know how to improvise. I can't yeah. imagine walking into a room thinking I gotta hit it, I gotta have something perfect right now. Exactly. Instead of going. What do you guys need? What, what's going on here? What are your issues? And we yes. need to improvise a little bit right now because we got a ton of thank yous to Oh, you we do to have give. a ton of like, thank so yous. Many. Thank you so much to Anonymous out of Los Angeles, California. Mm-hmm. Leadership gift. Thank you so much. Ring a ring a ring. I don't have the bell. We don't have the bell, so we can't ring it. But yeah, I don't know. Right. Thank kind of you so much. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to Pamela as well out of Troy, another uh, leadership circle. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to Michelle out of Allen Park. Thank you, Allen Michelle. Park, sustaining Allen member. Park. And I just want to say, Allen Park, thank you so much. This is the first time we got to call out That's Allen right. Park. Allen Park, we don't forget about you. We didn't know. We never forgot no. about you. We've never no. forgotten about you. Melvindale, we're, we're here for you, you as well. About us. That's Brownstown right. That's as well. Right. Down River. Down, Down River. River. We're here. Through. Huntington Woods. <laughs> Hello to all of you there. Anonymous from Huntington Woods also donating this hour. You're all entered in to win that grand prize package at the Metro offering includes the mocap membership arab american national museum package and so much more just want to say thank you so much to mark evan jackson mark, the you. co-founder of the detroit creativity project an actor a comedian and just an all-around Brooklyn swell guy uh, all around place. swell guy thank yeah. you for having me please check out detroitcreativityproject.org and know that from wayne state university you are listening to member supported public radio wdet 101.9 FM. Not too late to give WDT.org slash give.